Good morning, everybody. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. Sorry for being late. Technology just uh, lets us down, but thank you for waiting. Uh, my name is Dawes Zulu uh, from the Student Retention Unit. Welcome. Thank you for taking your time to join us today to this broad live broadcast. Um, the purpose of this broadcast Basically, it's to motivate and inspire uh, you as our first year students in your journey, in your academic journey. Today's topic is a, very, is a very interesting one, and I have esteemed guests who are going to unpack this topic. Today, we are talking about dropping off uh, out of an, a course. Yes, it sounds scary, the topic, but you are here to learn and to be motivated and, and to be inspired in your academic journey. So thank you for your time and welcome. Um, uh, just to go over uh, a few house rules, may you kindly please switch off your cameras when you join or, or uh, if you're already here, your camera is switched off, off and then uh, also your audio so that we do not disturb our guests today uh, as they unpack our wonderful topic. Thank you so much for joining us. Those are basically our house rules and just to... Uh, uh, alert you, you will get time because this is an hour conversation. Um, you will get time to actually pose your questions. We give uh, at the end of uh, the presentation. So thank you so much for joining us and for your time. So stay tuned. Uh, today, I have two guests today. Um, uh, uh, our guest is Mr. Lucky Libebe. Libebe. Uh, he's an environmental assessment practitioner. And then jo joining him also is uh, Kakiso Mohonwe, who's uh, doing her third year in in the industrial uh, engineering. So without a further ado, I'm just going to um, let our guest actually unpack this wonderful topic. Thank you. Please stay tuned. OK, there we go. Um, good morning, um, everybody. OK, let's do this. and. Uh, Oh, yes, I hope I am there now. All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, good morning to um, all the students, the first year students at the University of South Africa, UNISA. We want to welcome you to um, this session. And I want to believe that you are going to get information that will inspire you to um, become successful in your enrollment with UNISA, particularly as first year students. So as Ntogozo has already said, my name is Lakile Bepe. By profession, I am an environmental engineer. We are also called environmental assessment practitioners. So I am in the green environment. And um, my colleague, Kahiso, is actually a fourth year university student in industrial engineering. And therefore, we will just be sharing um, information um, around this uh, topic of dropout. So first of all, I'm going to start out with an overview. I'm going to start out with an overview of what the rate of school dropout has been in our country over the years. And so what I'm going to do is we will be looking at what the dropout rate in South African universities as a whole, and also in basic education like South African um, secondary and primary schools have been, that is before the COVID pandemic and now during the, uh, the COVID pandemic. And then um, we will also be looking at different reasons why uh, the student bodies drop off and are unable to complete their degrees. So yes, the first part of our presentation will be a problem statement, um, uh, but then we will also be prescribing what we believe is constructive solutions uh, that can be implemented by the student bodies within the South African universities. And, um, you know, just to ensure that um, you can continue with your studies um, successfully. So let me give you an overview of what the rate of, you know, school dropout has been like in South Africa before 2020 of the COVID pandemic and uh, this year, 2021, and also what it was like before. I want to start out by saying this is 
um, a research and findings that are made by an institution called the National Income Dynamic Study in South Africa. What they came out to a conclusion is they came to a conclusion that all South African universities put together can only accommodate 18% of all South African matriculants. That means every year, 18% of matriculants, you know, learners that matriculate, only 18% of them can actually be accommodated in our current South African university. So that already is one of the major problems of academic exclusion and why some people will not even at first place be absorbed into uh, the system. So it's an issue of institutional capacity where we don't have enough universities, you know, to accommodate the population of matriculants that uh, actually complete their matric every um, uh, uh, every year. So only 18% of matriculated students will be able to be accommodated within the South African universities. Now, here is another sad thing. Uh, this um, National Income Dynamic Study also established that of that 18% that makes it to university admission, they established that 47% of them will drop out before the end of the year. So already you are dealing with a problem where we have got a small fraction of students that due to institutional capacity make it to university. But then you have the secondary problem which 47% uh, uh, of them will drop out of their study before the end of their first year enrollment at university. Now, the study continues to say that in distance learning institutions like UNISA, the percentage of students that will drop off, it actually before COVID, that is uh, somewhere between the years 2015 and or until 2018, 2019, in distance learning institution, the number of drop off has increased by up to 68%. So that means 68% of the students that get admitted in a distance learning institute like UNISA will drop out of school. So you can see that, you know, um, retention is a very big problem within the academic institution. And that is why many universities like UNISA uh, uh, have now established, you know, student retention units to try and keep students in the system before um, you know they can actually uh, drop out. So that is the scenario. So number one, we have established the fact that uh, there is a problem of institutional capacity or the number of students that can be taken into the university and that is, it doesn't even uh, constitute dropping out. It's just pure academic exclusion now. And we also said that our universities can only take 18% of matriculants that uh, pass their matrix every year. So those of you that are in the system and you have been admitted and enrolled into UNISA, you really have to consider yourself very lucky because of uh, so uh, you know a number of factors that I've already mentioned that can potentially exclude you from academic um, admission. Now let me look at other shocking figures. Um, that relates to what the dropout rate in South Africa was before uh, COVID-19. These studies were done between the year 2015-2016 uh, up until 2019. This is a shocking discovery. It was discovered that in the year 2018 and 2019, more than 230,000 students dropped out of school. Now, this is before COVID-19. More than 230,000 students dropped out of school in the year 2018 and 2019 uh, for other reasons that I will get into. That figure has now, during the COVID-19 pandemic, actually tripled. The latest statistics that were released again by the National Income Dynamic Study shows that 
between the period of March 2020 and April and May 2021, these are recent, uh, uh, recent findings, they were able to establish that more than 750,000 students have dropped out since COVID-19 to date. That is a number that is almost uh, close to a million students that have dropped out um, you know, since COVID-19. So you can see that student retention has, with uh, COVID-19 pandemic, become an extremely a uh, huge crisis within our nation. And that means more and more students are being excluded. Now, the number that I gave you of 750,000 um, and more students that dropped out over the uh, past one year, that number uh, refers to obviously a basic education, like your secondary and primary school levels. So the problem of dropout, it is indeed a national crisis. So apart from the fact that we do not have enough universities to take in uh, students, what are some of the reasons why students are dropping out in such huge number? My focus is going to be on socioeconomic factors. And uh, Kahiso will touch on things that relate to lifestyle and, and, and other issues that, you know, students face on a daily basis. Uh, in 2015 and year 2016, there was a national movement called uh, uh, FISMAS Fall Movement in South Africa. And although it started in VETS, uh, it ultimately became a, a national movement and the movement also, um, you know, uh, uh, came out of the fact that there was an increasing number of students that were dropping out of school, and therefore the student masses were worried and they wanted to address these issues. Now, some of the issues that were reasons why at the time students were dropping out in such numbers, and those reasons still, some of them extend to this day. One of those reasons uh, was government spending on 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 um, a, a student funding, for an example, where you know the NSFAS scheme was unable to take as much students as uh, the system demanded. So the fact that there was under funding or under spending by government on student assistance on financial assistance to students actually led to so many of them dropping out. And then the second one was for institutional reasons, when universities would increase tuition fees. And um, that rendered, you know, academic feasibility uh, something impossible for most part of students. And then consequently, a lot of them dropped out of the system. And going back to issues of uh, a government when the Ministry of Higher Education uh, pronounced an escalation of fees, then again that led to so many students actually dropping out of the system. So um, secondary to the fact that we have got issues of institutional capacity. Secondly, we have issues of financial constraint as one of the major key contributing factors to students that are actually uh, dropping out. The last point that is connected to the NSFAS system, which uh, millions of students are relying on, it's a systematic or systemic uh, issue. And how the NSFAS was then arranged in those years, 2015 and 2016, is that as a student progresses from first year to second year, and should they fail a certain number of courses, then the NSFAS system was not able to retain them. And therefore, again, because of um, lack of financial backup, then these students would uh, drop off. So the second thing again relates to, you know, the financial feasibility or affordability of um, actually study. Now with the COVID-19 pandemic, things have become even more challenging because um, on top of the fact that we as a country have 
institutional constraints and uh, constraints around capacity, where only 18% of metric students can be accommodated by our universities. On top of that, the COVID-19 has introduced a new chain of impact that continues to uh, contribute to the reason why uh, students are actually um, dropping out. And one of the things that the COVID-19 has done, of course, is the fact that it has resulted in a lot of um, a lot of um, retrenchments happening. It was estimated that over three million people lost their jobs uh, in 2020 over the lockdown period. And then, of course, when people lose their jobs, then what happens is the supply chain that stabilizes access to education then also becomes affected. So what then happens is as parents lose jobs, then the uh, students' ability or, uh, you know, to afford education subsequently gets affected and so forth. And therefore you see lockdown resulting in national retrenchments of high proportion and ultimately students being unable because of lack of third party support or parental support to afford the cost of education consequently then dropping out of their of their program so that is what happened and then um parallel to that is uh, again uh, students have got other issues that they have to deal with uh, in the course of their studies and i think those issues then um, Gahiso will then get into that, uh, uh, those uh, issues as well and, and unpack them for us. But all of these are problem statements. Number one, I've highlighted that we have got problems of institutional capacity in our country. And uh, because we don't have enough universities to accommodate the number of matriculants, many of them are primarily excluded from admission, even from first year. Secondly, I've highlighted the fact that uh, um, government spending, government underspending on student financial assistance has contributed to many students actually dropping out. And the third thing I said, the systemic issue and institutional issues. Institution increases their tuition fees and as you study further, uh, education end up being something that is not affordable to you and then you consequently drop out. And the other thing is the structure of the NSFAS system in a way that when students fail um, their courses, they are unable to get further funding to continue with their studies. And that again has resulted in reasons why uh, students are, are failing. So um, I know that this already sounds like, yo, huge problems. Uh, you think about this and you say, correct, correct. And you can tick all of them and say, you are correct. and. Uh, there may be even other issues that you as the students are thinking about and you are probably wondering, okay, what is the solution now? Uh, our solution can never be um, one-sided. As I said, because this is a combination of a number of factors, we will need an interplay of institutional and uh, uh, statutory uh, um, solutions that should be taken into consideration to resolve some of these uh, uh, problems. Uh, problems that have to do with government underspending uh, or underfunding of financial um, uh, assistance to students then will require statutory intervention. That it's a problem that should be resolved with the Ministry of Higher Education to ensure that uh, we can see how we can, um, you know, uh, help students to access financial uh, assistance even furthermore. And maybe what we can do at a statutory or governmental level is to increase the number of student funding, not just to have one particular scheme and other student loans that are only available options to assist the students. And then secondly, on institutions, uh, you know, uh, the increment of tuition fee by certain uh, uh, academic institution also uh, contribute to the reason why there is dropout. And again, we will need institutional intervention on that, where some universities will then have to come into place and um, maybe not increase fees to a level that excludes uh, other students and, and, and so forth. And then more than all of these things, 
I want to just buttress the last point before Kakiso takes over, is the fact that we will need a personal determination from students, a personal tenacity that you as students, number one, I've already said that we can only take 18% of matriculants in our institution. So number one, you should consider yourself very lucky that you are part of the few that are absorbed into the system. So you need to do anything you can in your power and ability to remain in the system. Otherwise, you will be part of a majority that is already excluded. So I appreciate the fact that it is almost a privilege um, rather than a right for you to uh, be admitted in an institution of high learning. And that must influence, you know, your response and your attitude towards education. You should be tenacious enough to not allow, you know, minor problems and minor reasons and small excuses um, to make you stay away from these things. And I can only emphasize that tenacity, pushing and making things happen uh, and, and striving to succeed has to become our attitude. As students, we cannot afford to give up at the least resistance. You cannot drop off your courses simply because, um, you know, printers are not working or, you know, simply because you don't have transport money to get on the bus to go to school. You must appreciate the fact that uh, academic inequality and exclusion is so high in our country and therefore we don't have a luxury for certain things. So as student masses have that attitude that says, you know, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be difficult. Um, there are so many reasons ranging from governmental, institutional, and other forms of reasons that Kariso will take you through that can potentially exclude you, but you have to fight your way. This is part of you establishing a personal economic freedom for your life. You need this education and you need to use any possible um, solution to actually fight your way through. I'm going to pause out here for now and I will allow Kafiso to come and take over as she would be outlining to you some of the problem statements and the solutions before we allow you to take um, questions. Thank you. Well, thank you. Um, greetings to everyone. Thank you so much for having me today. My name is Kakiso Mohonwe and I am a fourth year industrial engineering student and I'll be sharing with you guys my personal story and uh, experience with um, studying with higher education and some of the challenges that I've encountered as a student and how I've managed to solve them and how we basically surviving and I hope in doing so I will inspire some of you to continue and if you're encountering the same problem or similar just to know that um, you are not alone. So yes, um, now the my focus today will be on reasons why many students are choosing wrong career path. Um, before I go into that, let me just, um, for everyone to, to be comfortable, I'd love to share my own personal story, how I came about, why did I study what I'm studying and everything. So I was born and raised in a village and um, I moved to Pretoria in a township called Mamelodi when I was about 14, where I continued the rest of my high school learning and I completed my matric in the year of 2017. And um, I was admitted to one of the top universities in engineering and um, it's been going good but challenging. So while on the topic of dropping out and challenges as students, I personally have been one of the students that were unfortunately excluded from university. Um, in the year 2018, I was excluded due to um, it was several reasons. The first reason, um, it was poor academic performance. And um, the second reason was uh, financial exclusion. So there was a lot of things that were going on, you know, and um, the third thing that I'd love to talk about is um, the disadvantages and, and, and cultural shocks that comes with being in this new environment as a student. You can imagine I grew up in a township. I was not interacting with a lot of different people. I was not really, um, you know, I didn't have enough knowledge or rather experience with interacting with different people, people of different backgrounds. And also, um, I was really shocked by their culture, if you know what I'm saying. Because I go to a university that has a lot of different um, 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 ethnic groups, 
if you get the idea and the picture. In mm -hmm. in back at home, it was just me and everyone that I'm used to. But now I was put into into this new environment where I had to excel and I'm expected to thrive. But there is a lot of challenges. There is a lot of mountains to climb. There's a lot of rivers to cross. And that was very hectic. And I know some of you are going through the same thing. And today I'm here to tell you that you can make it. You cannot only make it, but you can grow. You can find your way through everything and every challenge. Because trust me, it is not easy. And I think one of the problem is that when you're a student, especially if you did well, because I did well in my matric, completed very, 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 very nicely with good results, part of the, um, 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 the, the, the provincial awards, things like that. It was a lot of things. But when I went into university, university was totally different from high school. It was a new lifestyle. It was a new culture. It was a new environment that I had to find my way and I had to adapt. Anyways, I think you guys have a better understanding of who I am, what happened with my life, and now I can get into the real issue. Because I always think people listen to you much more better when they know a little about you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I hope, I hope you you know, you found an idea of what I am, what I'm doing and everything like that. So now getting into the topic of choosing the wrong career path. Now, before I get into that, I just want us to look into states. When I was doing these readings and doing my research, I found a really interesting stat, and I was shook. Like, oh my goodness, what is happening? So according to the research that was made by Harvard University and um, in cooperation with Prof um, Fishbots, that is 21% graduates that only 21% graduates with a college and a university that are currently using their degrees, their qualification right mm -hmm. now. And also 39% of them are considering change to change. Mm -hmm. That's hectic, I know. Mm -hmm. And 70% of the workforce is actively looking for better life opportunities. So think about it. In the industry right now, 70% of the workforce is considering changing. They're considering looking into different opportunities, getting better salary, getting um, better experience. So that's that tells us that there is a lot of movement. There is a lot of um, 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 there isn't much stability in the workplaces and in most of these study folds. And the shocking one is that only 14% of the workforce believe that they have a perfect career and they are happy where they are. So from the 100%, we only have a portion of 40% of people that believe that they are doing what they are meant to do and they are actually enjoying what they are doing. And that gives us a very good idea of what is going on. And I believe, um, um, I don't know if I can say this, but <laughs> one of the interesting facts that I found was that Apparently, 91%, not apparently, but this is based on research by the Harvard University, 91% of the millennials are expected to change jobs in three years. That is a very short period of time. So that tells you that there is a lot of changes. There's a lot of movement going up and down. And this is bringing us as a nation and as people to alert to say that there's something wrong that we're doing in careers. There's something wrong that we are doing in the workplace. So yes, based on the stats, now we can go into our information. So now, what are some of the reasons why people are choosing wrong career path? Number one is lack of adequate information needed to make the decision at that point. Mm -hmm. Because think about it, this is a lifetime decision that you make. And most of the time, actually not most of the time, all of us had to make that decision at the age of at the age between 17 and 19. That's when you're completing your high school qualification, you're moving into higher education learning. And at that point, research has shown that adolescents and young adults, both from teens, 20s and 30s, most of the time people make decisions based on habits and their own personal experiences. What do I mean by that? It simply means that people make decisions based on social pressures. That's mm. the first thing. Mm. Secondly, under the pressure of a time frame where they are making decisions. I'll give you an example. When I was in metric, I made a decision of studying engineering because at that point, I was doing science. That was convenient for me to go into engineering. Secondly, it is a decision that I made because 
I, according to my own little research, I will tell you now, I didn't make enough research, <laughs> but according to my own little research, I found out that there was more opportunities in engineering. And at first I had went into mechanical engineering and then I had to transition to industrial engineering in the middle of my degree. Then we'll get to that later. But what I'm trying to say is that people don't make decisions based on facts all the time. And according to research by, um, Harvard University, it's, it is stated that people make um, less optimal decisions without considering both the, the consequences of the positive side and the negative side, and also not determining the likelihood of both cases happening. And lastly, not integrating the, the, the consequences of the positive and the negative and making an informed decision. So that tells us that when we make decisions about careers at, at a young age, whether you are a teenager, in your 20s, in your 30s, there is clear evidence and stats that shows that these decisions are made, but not based on facts, not based on information that is very true and very evident and that lead people to making good decisions. But these decisions about careers and where people will be heading into jobs and employment are made based on habits mm. and tradition sometimes that is the very 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 first problem that we have secondly i am gonna talk about careers evolving so another challenge is that we have different careers evolving we have different careers evolving in such a manner that right now remember we're in the middle of um, uh, um industrial revolution so we have a lot of things changing the workplace is no longer the same we have a lot of new technological um, um, um inventions mm -hmm. And that is actually, it's actually um, I'm taking up space more than um, actual human um, um, labor force. So now the problem is two things. We have companies that are trying to maximize the profits and also minimize the cost of doing whatever they're doing. So now the challenge is we still have students that are going into field and studying qualifications that in two years, some of them, it's mm -hmm. that hectic. In two years, in three, in three years, in five years, mm -hmm. they will be replaced by robots. Some mm -hmm. of them will be replaced <laughs> by machines. Already there's been a, a great evidence and a great number of people that have been retrenched only to be replaced by a machine and a robot. So that tells us that right now we're at a point, because of the industrial revolution and because of many changes that are happening, we're at a point where you do not only make a career choice based on the knowledge of who you are, what you want to do, and where you are going. But you need to be informed about the industry that you're going into. You need to be informed about the changes that are currently happening right now. Mm -hmm. All right. So there is a lot of factors that come into that. And my third point is to say that um, when you are making a career choice, it is not um, it, making a career choice cannot be narrowed down to one to one factor. There is different factors that need to be considered when one is taking a decision to study a certain course or to go into a certain industry. Now we're gonna I'm gonna talk about two things. Number one, I'm gonna talk about who are you, and secondly, what are you good at. So the first thing is we are under social pressure to do what we love especially as young people mm -hmm. you're always told you should find your passion now there's two different things there's passion and there's reality passion is what you love reality is what you are mm -hmm. and i think there is a very thin line between those two actually i don't think the line is thin it's actually thick thinking about <laughs> it because they are completely two different ideas there is passion there is reality passion is what you love reality is what you are now a lot of people find themselves making career decisions based on what they love. I'll give an example with me. I made a choice to go to say that I'm gonna do engineering because I love maths, because I love science. That's fine. And specifically, I chose mechanical engineering at first. That's what I loved. That's my passion. But now the problem is your passions and what you love and what you're good at doesn't necessarily guarantee your career success. What do I mean by that? You can be good at something. You can be good at what you are doing. You can be good at with numbers. You can be good with calculations. You can be good with maths, with science, but it doesn't guarantee the success of your overall career as an individual. So now we need to consider, especially I believe I'm talking to most young people. We need to consider the fact that we need to be honest with who we are, what we want and the life that we want for ourselves rather than finding something that you love 
and making decisions out of um, uh, social pressures and um, um, focusing on what you want to do rather than um, actually choosing a, a, a career based on what society is expecting of you. So now I want to talk about um, what we need to change. I believe that we need to tune in and we need to tune out of the, out of the social pressures to find what we love and tune in into something more significant into our career lives of, of, of and, and pursuing who we are and being honest with ourselves and going deeper into studies, into studying and making choices that are not only suitable for us, but that we will enjoy and stick to in a lifetime. So yes, um, I'm not sure if I should be discussing the solutions right now of what I have spoken about because I think my time is about, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I have little time. Uh, can I continue with the questions, with, with the solutions? Uh, okay. It's just questions. Okay, uh, okay, so we're taking questions? Yes. All right, um, I'm gonna log off and then I think we'll be taking questions. Thank you so much, Mr. Libebe and um, Kahisa for sharing. Uh, your experiences and what is happening in our country and thank you everybody for being tuned i hope this is very very educational for you and more than anything it's inspiring and motivating you that you know um as a unisa student it can be hard to be studying in an uh, open distant learning but at the same time you're taking lessons what is happening in our in our country what is happening in the higher education uh, system and what is happening actually on a personal level, like how Kakiso was sharing her own personal story. For me, what I learned, I just want to just go a few points. What I learned from her, what she was sharing is that um, despite your background, you you, you need to um, be able to, when you go uh, or come into a higher institution of learning, you must firstly find yourself. And um, uh, what I can take away also is that even this, though the statistics are very high on choosing your career and walking your academic journey, um, it's important that you have to channel your, 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 your you, you channel your academic journey so that in the next few years you are able to say, okay, I've choose I've chosen uh, this uh, course. Um, I'm not going to drop off. It's not an easy journey, but what for me I can take away is that it's important that you channel your academic journey. As she was saying that it can change, uh, the, the, the statistics say that after three years it can change, but you have to choose, don't drop off from your career, I mean from your uh, studies, but know that in three years it can change and at the same time you must be able to adapt. And also, she mentioned that um, dropping off can be influenced by either the tradition, uh, by different habits, personal experiences. The takeaway from me when she was saying that uh, is that you have to do your research before you choose uh, your course. You have to do your research. And she was saying, and, and I'm sure it goes for a lot of us that, you know, um, we don't do a lot of research in finding art. It has to come from you. In finding art, when I choose this course, in the next three years or in the next five years, what is going? To, what is my plan? What is going to happen? Things change. Of course, we don't know. But you have to channel. Say, I'm choosing this course. This is my plan in the next three years. You have to do your research, and uh, ju don't just choose a course whereby you don't have a plan. Just channel um, the, your choice so that you. the key is it should be based on fact. I think that's why how she put it actually. Should be based on research, should be based on fact. And also, uh, Mr. Lucky also uh, spoke about the alarming statistics which are in our country that we have a lot of problems in higher education. Uh, he mentioned that there are institutional uh, uh, capacity from our country. So in a broader level, uh, in, in our country, there are institutional problems, the, the government underspending, there are also systematic issues because of uh, education can be very expensive because most of us are coming from disadvantaged backgrounds. Uh, this is a generalization. Um, so education can be very expensive. That's why people can drop off. And also we have a, a issues um, around the NESFAS funding. Uh, these are some of the issues that are making people to drop off. 
And this is what these are the takeaways that I have from uh, the presentation so far. However, can I just take a few questions from our chat box? Um, I'm I'm just gonna have a look. Uh, who has a question? It, well, if you don't have questions, I'm assuming that you're enjoying the talk so much uh, that you have nothing to ask, but you're just absorbing what our presenters have spoken about. So I, I don't know if it's a good thing, but I'm, I'm gonna take it as if it's a good thing. The only question that I can see if the recording is going to be shared, yes, we're gonna post it on our uh, on our project site. And also, it's going to be available on YouTube. I just want to alert everybody that at the end of the of the our talk, we're going to have a survey so that you are able to voice out uh, some of the thing, uh, the topics, or something that you would like us to talk about that will motivate and inspire you in our academic journey. Because as a student retention unit, we care about you, and as UNISA, we want you, uh, we want to provide you with tools which can assist you in your academic journey because it's not just theory and just choosing a course or because it's open distant learning, we're just leaving you there in your silos. No, we want you to feel um, that, we want you to feel that we care about your academic journey and you can reach out to us uh, whenever you have a, a question, we'll try to assist you. Um, okay, so one question would be, why would you say that learning online, it's from Lokanya. Would you say that learning online is difficult? That's one question. Um, and then we also have a question from Vinolia. Hi, Vinolia. Um, could public relations be one of the careers to be taken over by robots? Uh, Vinolia is fascinated by robots, so <laughs> she's worried. She's worried if she's choosing the right career. Um, some people are complaining about cameras, so sorry, I don't know how to assist you in wow. that regard. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to ask about the recording. Yes, the recording will will we'll share the recording. Uh, it's going to be available on our student retention unit. Um, website also, so please look out for that. Guys, please post questions. You can also uh, raise your hands. Oh, there, there are hands. Okay, let me check. Okay, here's Brian. Brian, you can go ahead, pose a question to us so that we can continue our conversation. Please unmute your mic and please un uh, ask your question. Brian, go ahead. Brian, are you there? Brian Dooley. Okay. Brian is uh, taking. Uh, hi. Um, hi. Sorry. sorry. I missed a chunk of the session, so I was hoping I'll, I'd catch up with it on the recording. Sorry. Uh, so I don't. I don't really yes, have. So a lot of. Speaking. I don't really have questions at this stage. Oh, okay. I'm saying, sorry. I oh, I'm uh, saying. Okay, you don't have a question. You're enjoying our talk. Are you feeling inspired? Uh, I did miss quite a chunk of the discussion, and that's why I was asking if the recording will be shared. Yes. Uh, and I'm glad that it will be, but uh, I suppose then uh, one can ask questions uh, or has an option to ask questions by email, perhaps once. Um, I've seen the recording. Okay, no problem. I really, would really, yes, please, please do that. Um, there is also Vinolia. Vinolia, do you want to pose your question? Your hand is up. Hi, Vinolia. Hi. Please, I was just yes. ask. Welcome. Yes, please pose the question. I was just wondering um, if public relations uh, could be one of the careers to be taken off by robots. Yeah. Okay, Thanks. I'm fascinated by Thanks. robots. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, uh, lucky that uh, Kakiso will uh, answer your question. Um, please, guys, do pose a question. Don't feel shy 
or you're still taking in the statistics, they shouldn't alarm you. The whole point of this broadcast is to motivate you and inspire you and for you to realize that an academic journey is not an easy, uh, uh, it's a not an easy journey. But at the same time, we want you to be motivated to say when you wake up tomorrow, yes, I'm going to um, continue with my studies. We, we are not undermining the different backgrounds and the environments that you might be like standing under, but we want you to actually be uh, mindful um, of your environment and be able to maneuver yourself. We're not saying it's easy, no. And at the same time, we are also saying that, you know, you think about the future. Think about the future. We're not saying you know, but at the same time, you must be able to adapt. What is happening around you, what is happening in our country, you, sh you should be mindful of what is happening. Um, there's also a guest, 5671. Um, your name is not, um, is not, I, there's no name. So if you want to pose a question, please go ahead. 5671, your hand is up. Hi, thank you for the platform. I would, like, I would like to find out, man, if you, if I want to change the career, how do I go about? Okay, we're going to, um, we're going to answer that. Okay. I guess everybody else is happy then. I take it everybody is happy. Oh, okay. No, um, not like. Do you not ask a question? Uh, and I second that question. Okay. Thank you, and uh, Tabi Singh. Okay, there's also another question from Johanna, saying, "I honestly and strongly believe that is nothing challenging about long distance learning." Okay, we. We, we, we note that and I think that is, um, we note that opinion. The challenge is now on the online route that has been taken. Data is expensive and most people are unfamiliar with technology, it hurts. I, I, I'm I with you there, uh, Johanna. Um, and we are not stupid, but come from disadvantaged technology background. I can attest to it. If I had no help from current UNISA students, assisting uh, assisting me, I would have dropped out. As it is frustrating and unfamiliar process which requires intense help. My question is, our uh, is our university aware and are they really reaching out? Yes, I think, uh, Johanna, this is a concern for many people. Uh, from my side as a UNISA representative, I can say that with reference to being disadvantaged technologically, uh, we do have a MOOC that we pro provide and we require all first year students to take. It, it's not compulsory, but it's voluntary. However, the MOOC will assist you in order to navigate around um, UNISA, uh, well, technology and UNISA systems. So I think that's a first step to take, is to take the MOOC um, when you enroll for your for for your course, take the MOOC because it will familiarize you with UNISA systems and technology um, as a whole. So that was Johanna's concern. Okay. Oh yes. Yeah. Here is T T J Lubisi. Uh, He's saying, "I'm happy with my studies and there is no difficulty difficulties that I'm I'm facing so far." Good for you, uh, TJ. We are very happy for you. And um, please also note that uh, as UNISA, uh, we are providing that platform. Please give us credit. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, there's also Jenna Candace saying, how does one defer certain, certain modules? Um, I think that's a, a UNISA process that you have to actually um, inquire uh, uh, Jenna Candace. Uh, with your department, because I don't want to go through a, um, a, a procedure that uh, for different departments, it might be diff uh, for uh, different departments, the procedure might be different. So you have to reach out to the admin of your department. I think those are the questions so far. Guys, give us thumbs up if you're very happy with this topic or you're learning something or something is bothering you with reference to this topic. Please do that. And please continue to post questions because it seems like there is no other question. So I'll hand it. Oh, I'll hand over to Kakiso and um, Lucky to go through your concerns and the questions that we've passed. Thank you. Okay, I hope everybody can see me. I'm gonna be answering some of the questions 
I'd leave them to Mr. Lucky to, to answer them. So the first one, uh, someone said um, learning online is difficult. <laughs> well, um, I'd say there is a lot of challenges learning online, but I'll give you what has been working for me because I'm also learning online. You must have a well-organized routine, how you're going to start your day, how you're going to work, and um, so that you, you know what you're going to be doing on a specific day and at a specific time so that you don't waste time thinking, oh, maybe let me do this, let me do that, if you get my idea. So the first thing that I advise you, have a proper routine, have a, um, if, you are, if you are a person who can use to-do lists, you can do that if it works for you. If you're a very organized person like me, and you want to use uh, maybe timetables, you're a routine person, that's very fine and it works for me. So I hope that is that is good enough advice for you. And then the second question somebody asked about is public relation <laughs> one of the courses that will be replaced by robots? So my, my, my answer to that is um, I cannot say no and I cannot say yes. This is why I'm going to explain why I'm saying that. So basically, if you if you study and you you follow this whole industrial revolution thing you will know that industrial revolution is not necessarily the taking over of the industry just by the just like this like immediately no it is small it is it, it is evolving little by little and gravitating towards automating um, almost everything so in terms of the public relation cost what i'll say is that public relation is moving more into more personalized communication wherein companies know that uh, personalized information like that is very valuable for both their market and also selling products so my advice to ever ask the question i believe that you're studying public relation is to say that i'd say that you must keep up with the new development of the career be on top of the game because the point is to make sure that you are you are you are not outdated you are not carrying knowledge from 2005 that is not going to be applicable in 2030. So my advice is to, to you is that public relation is still a, a good cost because I don't know if you guys know that companies buy um, data from, you know, good from Google and other things because they use this for marketing. They use this to sell their products and so on. And I think um, I hope that answered your question. So public relation, is it being taken over by Robots, not necessarily. You can keep up with the motion of the changes, so on and so forth. And then the last question is, how do I change careers? So changing careers, I think it depends. Um, it, it depends and it, it's different from institution to institution. Also, depending, are you moving from one faculty to the other faculty mm -hmm. or what is going on? But generally, I will say this. Um, when you're changing careers, first of all, I'd say look into the requirement of where you are going. What are the minimum requirement um, 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 for the course that you're looking into transitioning into, is it a different in, uh, is it a diff, is, is it a different um, faculty? If so, check out the requirement and um, start with the process. Communicate with your course administrators and look into that. But um, overall, I'd say that you can change at any time. You can change at any time as long as you know that that that's, that is what you want to do and you're very much passionate and you love it and you can definitely pursue it. So yes. I think that's all the questions that I'm here to answer. The rest I left them to Mr. Lucky. Thank you. Okay, um, I just want to say thank you everybody for your time and the opportunity. On the question of um, learning online being difficult, um, I can agree that it is. Yes, some people do find learning online difficult for different reasons. One, it could be um, because they, they have poor time or program management, like Ariso said, but we also are aware that there are certain localities where people uh, struggle with connectivity, network, and um, access to data or the affordability of data and so forth, and that contributes to the difficulty of learning online. But uh, having said so, it's something we have to adapt to because uh, the fourth industrial revolution is driving education to online so it's not something we can technically do away with uh, it's actually picking up momentum the world as a whole is evolving towards online systems and that's why we are having this online meeting right now uh, because apart from covid 19 and, and lockdown restrictions that is where you know technology is evolving to towards 
on the question of public uh, relations, um, uh, Kariso has answered that quite well. The only contribution I can make to that is that, yes, there is an extent to which the fourth industrial revolution is um, taking over public relations and, and customer care, but not completely. Banks have already introduced um, voice over systems when uh, you're doing phone, uh, uh, I mean, banking on the phone and banking on the net. So I think we will have a different topic some other time, hopefully with Ntogozo's permission to talk on online mailing and um, digital migration systems to talk about the impact of the fourth industrial revolution on the day. Otherwise, thank you all for your time and um, we hope to see you again. And we also hope that what we have shared with you will um, help you to navigate through the difficulties of learning and ensure that you complete your program. I also want to say to everybody, if you were thinking of dropping your course, maybe it is only prudent and advisable that you finish what you started. There could still be time to diversify to other courses a little bit later. You will find out when you get into the, the job market that the job market is actually integrated and you might have not necessarily had to leave your course for another course. And that's why some of us have got eight qualifications now because of how integrated the job market is. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mr. Laki and Kahiso, for sharing your thoughts and just um, making us uh, to be open-minded of where we are right now in our studies. And actually, I think uh, you guys ended up on a good note into into uh, making us aware that you know, dropping out on a course, it's 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 not a um, not shouldn't make emotional uh, decisions right now because your environment cannot uh, might not be actually providing uh, it might not be conducive for you, but at the same time, um, you know, you you must be able to uh, navigate your way and do not at all drop drop out of your studies. It's not an easy thing and distant learning is not easy like Akhisa said that you must be able to manage your time. So guys, I hope this was very uh, inspirational for you and motivating you in order to continue with your studies. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you for our esteemed guests for sharing uh, their thoughts, their personal stories and for actually going through the statistic of what is going on in the country and where the world is going as a whole. So thank you so much. So guys, please do not drop out of, of a course because, uh, you know, like Lucky uh, said, that you can always integrate it in future. You must be able to, to plan and say, in the next three or two, four years, this is where I want to go. So do not drop out of, of your course. So thank you so much for joining us. I hope this was very um, a valuable lesson for you. And uh, thank you for joining us. And I would like you to please uh, fill in a survey. We'll be sending it out emails where you'll be able uh, to voice out also your opinion and how did you find uh, this session? Was it helpful for you? And also to maybe just, uh, uh, well, Lucky will be invited again as well as Kakhiso to look at other topics, uh, but also for you to add on what is it that you want us to explain. How, 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 how are we as student retention units, uh, how can we assist you in your academic journey? Thank you everybody for joining us. Have a lovely day. Bye.